Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up to date I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be reviewing a few brand new Oxford Rail products for you. Today's products came out quite recently, they were released in the last few months of 2020. I ordered three of them, but one of them, well the last one, was from a later batch, so I haven't actually got the third, I've cancelled that. We've just got two today, but hopefully that will be enough. So the new models are these, the Oxford Rail 12 ton tanker wagons. And as you can see, I've got two slightly different variants here to show to you. And we're going to unbox these today and see what they are like. So the RRP for these is £21.95 and I bought mine from a retailer from Hatton's uh, affiliate links down in the description if you want to get some yourself for £18.50. Now to me that sounded pretty reasonable I thought yep yeah, that is not a bad price at all but let's find out where that price fits in with other similar products on the market. Now it's not an apples to apples comparison there aren't I don't think any sort of comparable 12 ton tankers on the market. However Backman for instance have a 14 ton and that is £25.95 RRP so that's around 18% more and then Hornby have this this is a 20 ton tanker quite a little bit larger this one's really cheap though it's £17.99 RRP and available for £16.50 at Hatton's so these Oxford tankers sort of fit somewhere in the middle of Hornby and Backman don't they not quite as dirt cheap and affordable as we've seen from Oxford in the past however I suppose a tanker is a little bit more complex than let's just say an open wagon or something like that so these are a little bit more expensive than normal but hopefully that means that more of that money has gone into producing an even better model well we'll find out anyway let's get these out and see what these are like so the Oxford Rail models I've looked at in the past have been outstanding value for money and I'm really really hoping that these two models are going to be the same in that regard so let's start shall we let's have a look at these and figure out exactly what these are like we'll start with this one uh, let me show you the end of the box which is on this side today to show you what I have here so the product number for this one is OR76 TK2004 Benzel and Byproducts number 1000 and this is indeed a 12 ton tank wagon and that is all there is to see on the box I believe yep not an awful lot else to see so let's get this out and find out what these are like I received these quite a while before Christmas in fact I gave one away before Christmas in one of my live streams so it has been a long time to wait to actually figure out what these are like so I'm glad to be doing this now right so we have an accessory pack here inside there we have a, what appear to be a couple of chains now that's a nice feature, I haven't seen that very often on double O gauge rolling stock. So you could fit those to the coupling hooks of the wagons and if you wanted to take out the NEM couplings, presumably if you had a steady enough hand, you could actually use those chains to couple up these wagons. That's fantastic. I mean, I don't own very much modern rolling stock, so maybe that's why I haven't seen that very often, but I'm not sure how common that feature is. Wow, well, look at that. Can you see that? There's a really nice finish to this. In fact, all of the models I've reviewed recently, new ones, that is, they've all had fantastic shiny finishes on them. I really do like that because, of course, in real life, these things are made of metal and the metal does have that sort of sheen to it. However, I do assume that these are going to be plastic, but... There is something that I've noticed straight away with these. Normally with Oxford Rail rolling stock, you lift them out of the pack, and well, I at least have always noticed how lightweight they are. This one doesn't seem too lightweight. There's actually a fair bit of heft to this, which is quite impressive. And just look at some of the details on here. You've got these really fine sort of supports holding the tank on. The underframe looks really impressive, doesn't it? It's actually super realistic. I love the frame that the tank is sitting on. Wow. It's quite an impressive model that, I love the metal wheels. We'll take a closer look at these in just a second, but that has impressed me. The weight in particular is pretty good. Obviously you don't want wagons like this to be too heavy, but when they are too light, you just think, mm, it's a bit naff, isn't it, for what I paid? No, this feels good and heavy. I can imagine a big long rake of these going along just fine without being pulled off. That can happen if they're too light. No, that looks really, really decent. Okay, well, let's have a look at the second tanker that I bought. I believe this is the same model, it's just a different livery. Uh, let me show you what's on the end of the box. So the product number for this one is OR76 TK2003 British Bitumen. Oh, that's a satisfying word, isn't it? Bitumen. <laughs> I'll probably have to edit that out. Uh, coal fix number 56, 12 ton tank wagon. So it is a 12 ton tank wagon, just like the other one. Right, let's get this out then find out what this one's like 
A more simple livery, this one. The third wagon that I had ordered was, uh, again, a bit more complex like the first one, but that doesn't matter. I might get some more in the future if these prove to be good. Okay, yeah, we've got more of those uh, chain link couplings. That's fantastic. I love that feature. That's very, very nice. I don't think I'll use them, but it's nice to have the option, isn't it? And then let's open this one up then. Let's see what this one's like. Again, it feels weighty like the other one did. And this is a bit more simplistic, but perhaps some people will quite like that. And obviously it's nice to have the choice, isn't it? But even so, even though it's a little bit simpler, it's still very, very smart. It's still got that lovely satin finish, which is, as I say, so common on models these days. And the quality seems to be really, really good. I haven't had a proper look at these yet, but I'm not seeing any glue marks or any messy assembly or anything like that that I would want to criticise. No, these weren't the cheapest in the world, but so far I would say I'm getting exactly what I paid for. So let's pull this other one in. Yeah. These look pretty decent, actually. For £18.50, these look very complicated and very detailed and very good quality and very, very, very everything you can think of models. Really like those. Right, well, let's get these up close onto the white background and we'll pick out some of the details, shall we? So there it is then, up close and personal for you. The first of the two wagons. This is the Benzel one. And you know what? I reckon Oxford Rail have done it again. The quality of this model, particularly at that price point, is really, really impressive. I love this one. It's, as you can tell, it's just been put together so, so nicely. Now, the model is made largely of plastic. Um, there's no metal construction, I think, besides the buffers. Those are made of metal. Perhaps it would have been nice to see maybe the underframe here made of metal. The reason being that most of the weight at the moment seems to be coming from the tank. I would assume there's a big weight inside there or something. And that makes the wagons a little bit top heavy, which maybe could introduce some instability. I don't know, I haven't tried that yet, but perhaps a die cast underframe or chassis might have corrected that issue and allowed the tank to be a little bit lighter. Also, the sole bar appears to be very, very slightly bowed. Um, I got this new ruler for Christmas, so I'm going to crowbar it into a video here. On both of my examples, the sole bar is slightly bowed. Um, hopefully I can demonstrate that. It's very, very slight. Oops, too clumsy for this, aren't I? Yeah, hopefully you can see that. Now that may well be by design. Like I say, the, the same is true on both of the examples I have here. So that may be completely intentional, I'm not sure. But either way, if nothing but for the advantages to the center of gravity, yeah, perhaps a die cast under frame would have been decent. However, overall, for what I paid, nobody is complaining, I don't think. So let's look at the decoration then. Look at the way the printed paintwork goes underneath the tank very slightly. That means that tank must have been tampo printed before it was assembled onto the wagon, which means the production, well, like all models, I suppose, but particularly this one, must have been very multifaceted with lots of different steps uh, taking place in order to get the model finished. Again, at that price point, is quite impressive. And if I show you the underframe, you can see there's lots of painted detail on there as well. You can see the fact that it's oil. Load 10 tonnes, which I thought was a bit confusing to start with because we know these are 12 tonne wagons. I would assume that 10 tonnes is the load that the wagon can take. The other two tonnes, presumably that's the wagon itself. I'm not too sure. But no, this wagon is so detailed that you can actually get an idea of how the things in real life were constructed. For example, you can see the hooks on the wires which hold the tanks in place. That's a, such a fantastic little detail. I think those are real hooks as well. They're not just moulded to look like that. I think those cables are actually being held by those hooks. And you can also see here, look, you've got these struts coming from the centre of the sole bar here and going up to these supports on the sides of the tank. And you can even see the little bolts because presumably these wires would be tensioned in order to sort of squeeze the tank in real life and hold it nice and snug. The attention to detail is fantastic. I mean, I've learned so much more about these 12 tonne tankers by just looking at this model as opposed to trying to find information online. It's really, really interesting to look at. Okay, let's look at some of the nuts and bolts then. You've got nice metal wheels, as you can see, nothing wrong with those. They look reasonably standard, don't they? And um, Nice and freewheeling, I thought, when I was turning them by hand, although we'll see how those go on the track. You've got NEM couplings, which appear to be screwed on. I don't know whether those screws also hold the tanks. I think possibly they do. Yeah, if you look underneath there, you can see a screw. I wasn't sure whether you could just unscrew those NEM pockets so that you've got a, a more realistic tanker that you can just couple up using the chain link couplings. The NEM couplings are okay. They do seem to be drooping down a little bit though, don't they? I did notice that when they were in the box. Whether that's a problem or not, I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to wait until we're down on the track for that. But besides that, as I say, the quality looks fantastic. As you can see, looking around the model here, no glue in sight. It's ultra nicely built. And I will just show you a shot from the underside of the wagon because the fact that this wagon still looks perfectly realistic, even on the underside, you can see all the framework and the tank through the framework. 
that is just wonderful, isn't it? Really, really nicely detailed. And for less than £20, I'm incredibly happy with this. Let's swap over then and show you the second of the two tankers I bought. So there it is. There is the Colfix wagon. It's much the same, including the slight Boeing to the soul bar. But again, I'm still not entirely convinced that that is unrealistic because obviously if these cables are under tension, then perhaps there would be a little bit of Boeing in the soul bars in real life. In model form, though, those cables are not under tension. I know some people will be wondering that. So it isn't because of those that the, the wagon in model form has warped, I don't think. Anyway, let me just show you some of the decoration because obviously it is a little bit different. You've got, again, nice printing which slopes underneath the tank very, very impressively. On the ends, you've got 56. That must be the number of this particular wagon, yeah, as you can tell. And then the underframe also has slightly different print work on there as well, including the 10 ton signage too. So there we go, two very, very lovely wagons, beautifully put together, excellent value for money, and also very heavy. Now, I said they were heavy when I pulled them out of the box. When I got them on the scales, I was quite surprised as to just how heavy. So these weighed in at a whopping 42 grams each, which is quite a lot. I mean, an Oxford Rail five plank wagon like this one weighs literally half that at 21 grams. So despite the bodywork not being made of metal, they're still pretty decently heavy, not overly so, not so much that they're going to cause locos to struggle or anything, but enough so that they feel like good quality models in the hand and so that they're not going to be pulled off the track on a curve in a long consist or something like that. So there we go, two lovely wagons, let's get them onto the track, we'll do some rolling tests and see how these perform. Okay, so in order to haul the tankers, I have the Backman 1F down onto the track. That's a lovely little 060 tank engine. And added to the train already, I have some of the other tankers I have in my collection. Most of these are older and all of them are less detailed than these new Oxford ones. And waiting to get onto the track, here we have the Oxford wagons here. Let's pop these on. Now, incidentally, these wagons here are suitable for eras two and three, which means if you model uh, between 1875 and 1947, then you can consider these. Uh, you can see by the fact that the coal fix wagon has just automatically coupled that these are incredibly free rolling. Look at that. And in fact, I have already done a free rolling test whereby I set the wagons at the top of Gordon's Hill, let them go and see how far they roll. And as you can see, the Benzol wagon here kept going and going and going. Usually if a wagon just meets that curve at the bottom of the hill, I would say it's good. But this one got all the way around the curve. And the Colfix wagon was much the same as you can see. In fact, I think that one actually got a little bit further. Really, really free wheeling, which means despite their weight, a loco shouldn't really have much trouble handling these on a layout. So with that, let's start the 1F then and see how these get on around all the various curves now that they are coupled into a train. Here we go. Ah, seems like they're good and they do look fantastic running, don't they? I want more. I want lots more. Anyway, we'll catch up with those in just a second, see how they handle the layout at large. But I thought on the other lines, I would run some other Oxford rail creations. So on the middle line, I have the Dean Goods with some, not the railgun for a change. I thought I would put on the early Great Western Coaches by Hornby. So there we go. That's that. And then on the very inside line we have, I think this train is entirely Oxford Rail, so we have the Janus Shunter, and then various Oxford private owner open wagons with also uh, sort of, I think is it one of the toads on the back, Oxford toad. So there you have it, enjoy the running session, let's catch up with those tankers and make sure they're not derailing or anything on the curves. Okay, there's the 1F, there's the other motley collection of tankers, and there we have it there, the two Oxford ones. And as you can see, at this speed at least, <laughs> they seem absolutely fine. The reason I say that is if you're going to be messing around running them at super high speed. And I know, I know most people don't. But if you do, bear in mind those tanks are pretty heavy and the centre of gravity is pretty high. So don't be surprised if they go flipping off the track. But at any sort of prototypical speed whatsoever, as you can see, they are absolutely fine. And that means that we have... A good model on our hands, I think, folks. The detail was perfect, the quality was more or less there, the price reasonable, and the performance seems absolutely fine. So there you have it. I can offer my seal of approval for the Oxford Rail 12-ton tankers. And what's more, I'm so fond of these already. They look so good. I can just see myself buying 10 more of them. I probably won't because that would break my bank account. But if I did, I know I would so enjoy having a decent rake of these. And you know what? Maybe if I buy a couple a year for the next 10 years or so, I might end up with a decent rake of them. Well, I've made a good start. That's the 2021 couple bought. Very, very good. Well done, Oxford Rail. We knew they'd be good, but it's nice just to check, isn't it? 
So let's have some ratings for the brand new Oxford Rail 12 ton tanker wagons. Level of detail, first of all, I've given it four and a half stars. I was really impressed with the detail on these, particularly because you can look at these tankers from any angle, including from underneath, and they look super realistic. They are so, so good. I love the inclusion of the three link couplings in the detail bag. Man, they're just a joy to look at, aren't they? I knocked off half a star for the lack of sprung buffers because if I give it five stars, people would say, oh, it's not got sprung buffers. How can you give it five stars? Besides those, though, there's no other way to criticise the detail, I don't think. The performance, I'll have to give it five stars simply because they've performed faultlessly. They run really freely. They handle curves absolutely fine. The couplings, while they did look a bit droopy, they were actually functional. I didn't experience any problems at all coupling them up. The performance is really, really good. Now on the quality score, I've given it a little bit of a lower score. Generally, the build quality, the decoration, the way this was assembled, etc., etc., was really, really good. Wouldn't fault it too much. It does, however, lose one star for the plastic construction. Like I say, a little bit of a die-cast underframe perhaps would have gone down really nicely. And also, I've had to knock off another half a star for the sole bar being bent. It is very slight, only just noticeable, but I did in fact notice it. Now, I've done my research, I've looked at images of the real 12-ton tankers, and I cannot see any bowing of the sole bars on those images. Now, I could be wrong because I haven't seen one in the flesh or anything like that, but I don't think they have bent sole bars in real life. Now, if I am wrong and you can prove it, please do, and I will gladly add that half a star back onto the quality category. And the bowing is certainly not so egregious that some of the details don't fit properly. We've certainly seen worse, but I do have to deduct marks when I find quality issues like that. However, the quality overall is not bad at all. Now, for an RRP of £21.95, or the price from Hattons of £18.50, I thought the value for money there was very, very good. So I've given this four star. It's not a bargain, as I thought some of the Oxford Rail products were, but at the very least, it's an incredibly reasonable product, and I'm more than happy with them for what I paid. And if you too would like to pick some of these up, I do have affiliate links down in the description for you. Overall then, that is 8.31 out of 10. Very nice. Let's put that into the logbook, rolling stock logbook. There it is. So yeah, 8.31, that's at the top. Obviously, that's a good score to try and beat. Let's see what other rolling stock comes along this year and let's see how it stacks up. Nice. Good job, Oxford Rail. Well done. There you go then, folks. Yes, overall, I'm very, very pleased with those tankers. They do the job and they do the job very nicely, actually. And frankly, I'm left wanting more. So hopefully I will be able to do that one day. Uh, I probably won't make you sit through another review of any more of them. But if you see more of them crop up in my future videos, then uh, you've been warned. Yes, you, you know why. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Rolling stock, I tell you, I never thought I would enjoy filming rolling stock reviews as much as I do. But that was just as good, just as fun as filming a locomotive, I thought. And that's good, because there's lots of rolling stock I haven't covered yet. So keep those awesome suggestions coming in. Let me know what I should be covering, and I will definitely take your suggestions on board. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video very, very soon. Take care of yourselves. See you on the next one. Cheers, folks.